As human civilizations evolve and progress, we continuously find new ways to mechanize and automate the laborious tasks we are required to do for survival, like using tractors on farms or implementing irrigation to deliver clean water to our homes. One thing is common amongst these advancements in machinery and processes. They require work and energy. Where before it was humans who would manually achieve these tasks, the machines we have created require energy to complete this work, usually in the form of fuel. For most of our history since the Industrial Revolution, we have relied on fossil fuels to provide this fuel. Although these fuels have allowed humans to advance at rates much greater than previous eras in our history, scientists have observed that the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere has been steadily increasing due to the burning of fossil fuels. Furthermore, they have identified that the increased amount of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere is increasing the global average temperature. An increase in global temperature can induce catastrophic effects around the world, affecting various regions in different ways. For example, the higher temperatures are contributing to the melting of the Greenland ice sheet, causing rising sea levels. Or, in southern Asia, there is risk of destabilizing the Indian summer monsoon, which would cause a drought in one of the most populated areas in the world. Presently, scientists have determined that limiting the average global temperature increase to 2 degrees Celsius would reduce the likelihood of calamitous natural disasters related to climate change. To meet this goal, a drastic reduction in greenhouse gases emissions is required during this century as well as the addition of energy sources that do not contribute to carbon emissions. Over 100 countries have adopted policies in support of renewable energy sources in an effort to mitigate the effects of climate change. Some nations are targeting that solar and wind energy, among other renewable energy sources, will supply at least 50% of the global energy demand by 2050. But why are nations aiming so far ahead? If renewable energy sources provide energy yet contribute no greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, why aren't renewable energies producing most or all the energy we need as humans? There are several reasons why we can't simply add renewable energy sources into the grid. For example, the energy output of these technologies is uncertain due to forecast errors. Also, transporting the energy produced by renewable energy sources cannot be done efficiently yet. There is also the reality that cost and economics drive the implementation of systems. Currently, in our present state, adding mass amounts of renewable energy sources into the grid gives rise to interesting economic consequences, which, as we will show later, may lead to a situation where renewable energy sources are not having the desired effect in reducing carbon emissions. To explain this seemingly paradoxical circumstance, we will look specifically at what happened when Germany added solar and wind energy sources into their energy systems. Take a look at this graph. It shows for one year the demand of electrical power for each hour in Germany in the year 2011. The horizontal axis is the time axis which shows every hour in that year chronologically and the vertical axis is the power demand at each hour. Now if the hours were sorted in descending order, so the hours where the demand was highest are shown first, we get this new curve called the load duration curve. There are three important regions in the load duration curve, the base load, the intermediate load region, and the peak demand. Also, the area under the graph is equal to the total energy consumed that year. In order to meet the energy demand in the most cost-effective manner, screening curves help determine which energy sources should be used depending on how high the demand is at any given hour. There are three technologies shown here, nuclear, coal, and gas. Comparing the screening curves with the low duration curve shows clearly how much each technology contributes to the total energy produced during that year. Here, nuclear, which has zero carbon emissions, produced the most energy, whereas coal and gas, which use fossil fuels, were re required only for the intermediate and peak times. Adding in renewable energy sources changes the low duration curve by reducing the amount of required energy produced by the conventional energy sources. This new graph is called the residual load duration curve and has a slightly different shape as well as a smaller area under the curve. The difference in areas of the two graphs is the amount of energy that was produced by the renewable energy sources. However, when we compare the residual load duration curve to the screening curve shown previously, we see that nuclear contributes less while coal and gas are contributing more. In other words, after the addition of renewable energy sources, the use of technologies that are emitting greenhouse gases increased. This is clearly a paradox, but it works this way because the economics of producing energy in the most cost-effective manner is prioritized over using technologies that produce less greenhouse gas emissions. Obviously, nations and civilizations should not move away from integrating renewable energy sources into the grid. However, it is not as trivial as simply building wind farms or installing solar panels on buildings. In the future, the addition of renewable energy sources can be achieved economically in several ways. Lowering peak energy demands, increasing storage and transmission capabilities, and advancing technologies related to negative carbon emissions and renewable energy sources. 
Although these are highly idealized solutions, we as humans need to act fast and comprehensively if we want to build and live within a sustainable future.